The topic of this video is called rotational analogs, and specifically in the case of kinematics, what is a rotational analog? So to review in the last video, we were talking about circles, and how can, how can we get to define angle in a physically meaningful way for a circle like this? So let's start out by measuring angles from what we usually call the positive x-axis, and let's suppose on this wheel, we have a dot right here, and we want to know how far is it rotated when it goes from here to there. And we said that we can define this angle in terms of fractions of the whole circle that are divided by 2 pi, and we call those measures of angle radians. So suppose this is the initial angle, and this is the final angle. We can define a change in angle that we call delta theta, and this delta theta is equal to theta final minus theta initial. Now this might remind you of ways that we measured position in the past, and in fact there are many, many correspondences between this way of measuring angle and the way we've measured position and velocity in the past. We could say that the time it takes to go from theta initial to theta, theta final is t, and then we can define a velocity that's the change in angle. We call that angular velocity. And that's generally measured in radians per second. We use the Greek letter omega, which looks like this. It looks like a curvy w. And that's the change in theta divided by how long it takes to change that theta. So you might also know, if you want to describe it calculus-wise, that's d theta dt. So why do we call this an analog? An analog, the first thing that might come to mind is an analog clock, which is a clock that looks like this as opposed to a digital clock. Why is this called an analog clock? Well, an analog is like an analogy. It's a comparison between two things that have parts that relate to each other in the same way. So this clock is an analog of an older technology, the sundial. One question you might have is, why do clocks go clockwise? Why didn't some people design clocks to go the other direction? Well, at least in the northern hemisphere, where clocks were engineered for the first time, the sun goes across the sky from east to west. And what that means, as the sun moves this direction, and we have a shadow caster called a gnomon, this shape here is called a gnomon, as, as the sun moves this direction, direction the, the shadow will move this direction, direction that we call clockwise. Interestingly, if you're in the southern hemisphere, the sun goes the opposite direction across the sky. It still goes from east to west, but it goes counterclockwise, and the shadow will move the other direction. You can think about the geometry there and why that works. But this is an analogy for the motion of that shadow in the older technology, so we call it an analog clock. You might see this spelled A-N-A-L-O-G-U-E if you're using British spelling. So both of those are ways of spelling analog. It's a comparison between two things that have parts that relate in the same way. So what analogies do we have? Well, if I move from some position, x initial, to some other position, x final, and it takes me t seconds to move there, and let's suppose when I'm at x initial, I have velocity that I call v initial, and when I'm at x final, I have a velocity that I call v final. You can see that I sped up there. We can define all kinds of things about this relationship. I say that my delta x is x final minus x initial. We might want to know what's my average speed. Well, my average speed is x final minus x initial over how much time it took. That's delta x over t. We might want to know what is my velocity. We define that as the derivative of position with respect to time. What is my acceleration? Well, I know the acceleration is the time derivative of velocity with respect to time. Or, in a discrete case, the average acceleration is my final velocity minus my initial velocity divided by how much time it took. We also have relationships like my final position, if I have constant acceleration, and an initial velocity vi will be my initial position plus my initial velocity times time plus one-half 
my acceleration times time squared. You can review where that came from, but that's a, an important relationship. We also have the relationship that final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration. This is in the case of constant acceleration times how far the object traveled. These are all equations of kinematics that we use when things are moving from place to place. Well, what if we're not interested in translational motion, but we're interested in the motion of a wheel as it spins? Well, well then, then, I might, might be moving from some, some direction. Suppose I have a point on this wheel, wheel and its, its angle is called theta initial, and then at some time later, its angle is called theta final. Well, every one of these relationships works with angle as well. So I have delta theta equals theta final minus theta initial. So I'd say that theta is the rotational analog of x position. What about the rotational analog of velocity? Well, it's angular velocity. And that's the change in theta over time. So you can see there's a correspondence between theta and x here, time and time. And the definition of instantaneous angular velocity is d theta dt. Same relationship. For angular acceleration, we use the Greek letter alpha. Alpha is, what do you think, d omega dt, the change in angular velocity, radians per second, per second, radians per second per second. Here we have radians per second. Theta is measured in radians. So what's this going to be? Well, every time I have an x, I replace it with a theta. Theta final equals theta initial plus how many radians per second I start with, my initial angular speed times time, plus one half, what's my acceleration called now? Alpha, one half alpha t squared. Everything works the same, but I'm using Greek letters instead of Latin letters to describe this. So what would this relationship be? Omega final squared minus omega initial squared equals two alpha delta what? Delta theta. So these are each a rotational analog of the, kinetic rela the uh, kinematic relationships we already studied earlier for linear motion. You don't have to learn anything new. You just have a new interpretation, and it's in the case of rotational motion. We can also relate these rotational motions to the translation of the wheel. If it's rolling without slipping, then I know its velocity will be its angular velocity times its radius. That's very useful. And its angular acceleration, the acceleration of a point on its rim, will be its, sorry, its translational acceleration, or the tangential acceleration of a point on its rim, will be the angular acceleration times the radius. So to convert between each of these angular measures and the linear measures, the conversion factor is simply the radius of the wheel.